Okay, so do you believe it's that's not any ontological question? Is do, does Chad believe that it's possible? It's possible that he is not an agent. Well, I suppose it's possible. So it's possible that you lack intentional states. Yeah, it's possible. Uh -huh. It's possible that I'm that I'm a um, that I'm uh, somebody that I'm have merely phenomenal states, right? Okay. Don't so, have intentional states. Okay. So under merological nihilism, you say it's possible that you lack intentional states. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. Thanks. But why it has to be the case? Which is that either you're going to appeal to um, the concept of an agent, right, who's grouping things together, in which case you have instrumentalism, or you're going to appeal to the fact that there's a it's attached to, and apart from the uh, uh, instrumental attribution of the agent who's doing the bundling. From what I've read, and admittedly I haven't read much on this topic, but I think Hume even Hume, Hume explored um, that idea. I think he proposed that properties are bundled. I, I forgot what it was, but I'm, I'm sure there's literature on this. Yeah, well, you, 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 you're you mistaken. So, uh, I'm mistaken, so, so, Yeah, you're mistaken. So, in fact, you have to appeal to a bare... You have to either appeal to a substance in virtue of which the properties are bundled together, or you're an instrumentalist about the bundle. Right. We're saying, look, here's the... Uh, the, the take home, the take home from this is you have a dilemma, right? Either properties are bundled together arbitrarily by the by the wills of agents. That is to say, it's useful for us to refer to this set of properties as such, right? Or that we have uh, beliefs and desires that make use of these properties uh, construed as such, right? Or that there's something about these properties. That, uh, that grounds them as bundled together. Right. Yeah. That's what a substance is. A yeah. Particular. Yeah. I would. I would. Sorry. I would just. Sorry. I would just say that it's easier to go with um nihilism, mirological nihilism, and just be done with it. I think that would just be the easiest way to get out of this whole thing. Well, but the point is, Derez wants to thinks that he has an argument. I know. To yeah. yeah. I mean. Uh, I wrote a paper on this. In order for the argument to get off the ground, mereological realism has to be a coherent position. Yeah. For it to be a coherent position, it has to be the case that substance is a coherent concept. I mean, that's not necessarily the case. In order to show that, in order to show that X is incoherent, I, I don't have to show that its negation Y is coherent. You, you are claiming that you're immune to the objection. Why are you immune to the objection? Because you're a realist, not a nihilist. So if you're immune to the objection because you're a realist and not a nihilist, then it has to be the case that realism is a coherent position for you to be not yourself reductio ad absurdum, right? No, is that necessarily the case? I mean, in order to show that X is incoherent, to show that theory X is incoherent, you're on. Okay. Yeah, but are you arguing against your? The question he's asking is whether you're arguing against yourself. Are you arguing against the position that you hold? No, I don't. Um, I mean, I have. I'm not sure if I hold to. Um, um, no, I don't. I don't think so. Sorry, so you just. So are you just staving judgment on whether realism or anti-realism is true? I'm really, really not sure whether bundle theory necessarily entails. Merological nihilism. I'm just not sure about that. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't entail. It. it doesn't entail merological nihilism if what makes it the case that a group of properties are bundled together is because they're attached to some bare particular or substance. I don't that think that's case, necessarily the case, and I do remember reading something about that, which which contradicts what you just said. But I can't I can't point to anything right now. I'd have to go back and read read it over. So. Um, Drez, when the time comes, I mean, I don't want to derail the conversation, but um, can you just illuminate some of your objections to my argument, and then like formulate them in your head, and then you can talk to me after after this whole thing. Uh, 
Um, sure. Real as fuck, asshole. No, no, I mean, you guys can continue, um, but I, I said, I decided I would just listen to at least some of his arguments, but that's afterwards, you guys can continue. But I understand what you're saying, um, Jack, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what I'm saying yeah. is there has to be a fact of the matter which makes it the case that a group of properties, right, if one is not going to be an instrumentalist about those properties, and... So what makes it the case is going to be that there's some fact which grounds the bundling of those properties. That's what a substance is supposed to be, right? So that's the only way to be a mariological realist <clears throat> is to affirm some kind of um, substance theory to affirm the possibility that there are bare particulars. Exactly. Right. So if one one wants to make some kind of argument to show uh, that. There's a problem with muriological uh, nihilism, which the person proposing the argument is immune to, right? They have to actually have a substantive realist position that's coherent. Right? So they no, have to be all. able to explain what their first, particular well, is. I, have a, yeah. I mean, not at all. I just have to show that muriological nihilism is false. I don't have to. Well, can you do that? Alternative to that. I don't even have to give an alternative to that. No, but can you show it's that it, it's actually false, though? Because I just... That's not even a ridiculous ad absurdum of, of, of nihilism. Oh! It's, the, the, argument, the argument isn't going to help you, right? Why if not? In fact, Mary, if, in fact, mariological realism is untenable, right? Because the dilemma is you can either be a mariological nihilist or a mariological... Uh, realist. realist. Or you can just what do you mean? What do you mean you don't know? It's it's a dichotomy, right? You can just say you don't have a, a coherent substance theory or a coherent view of. But then that's nihilism. That's a form of anti-realism about muriology, is it? Isn't it? Nihilism uh, is a form of anti-realism. Yeah, but. But saying you don't know it isn't committing to anything. Oh, well, uh, well okay, okay. Yeah, I mean, you could not commit to anything. You could just say that neurological uh, nihilism is false. Well, I mean, well, you have to show that. It follow that neurological nihil realism is true. I think the idea that neurological nihilism was false. I think the idea is that, Jack, if both, uh, if both positions are incoherent, that just means that, um, that you can't well, make an we, idea. We, we haven't examined the argument yet as to whether there really is an argument against muriological nihilism. But we don't need to go through that argument, right, if we can show that muriological realism, which would be entailed by the falsehood of muriological nihilism, is completely incoherent, right? Yeah, I guess that's right. Yeah, yeah but I don't, I, I want to hear Dira's argument against muriological nihilism, because apparently you think it's a reductio ad absurdum, and... I mean, I wrote a, pa a paper for a class on this topic. I don't see how it's a reductio. Uh, it's, it's a pretty long argument. I'd rather not go through it again. I'm just going to uh, post it in the side chat or something. Wait, what did you do? Uh, you said that, you said that, um, what philosopher did you said offered this argument? Uh, Swinburne. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, well. Are you familiar with... Swinburne's argument, Jack? Oh, uh, no, not offhand. Not, uh, Swinburne's a dualist, isn't he? I mean, I've heard his arguments for dualism and identity. I just don't pay attention to him. Um, but I would say that, I mean, have you heard of the Sorites paradox, d -Rest? The what paradox? The Sorites paradox? No, I haven't heard of that. So... If you take a grain, if you take like a an atom from a stone, at what po and you keep doing that, at what point does it not become a stone? Right, isn't that like super? Uh, Theseus. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, what is your answer to that? I'm not sure, and I'm not sure if I would have to provide an answer. Well, I mean, you're the one who claims that muriological nihilism is false, and I'm saying that it follows logically from the evidence. 
And I mean, are you affirming mereological realism, or are you just saying that you don't know? I mean, I'm just saying mereological nihilism is false. To, I've given a word to and he, he, I wouldn't even have to propose my own to, model. He has, to, he has to affirm mereological realism if he affirms that mereological Sure, realism. I'll just affirm mereological realism. Because it's mereological. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then what's the bare particular? So we know that some properties are never bundled together. For example, for instance, uh, I would like, like to ask. Charge. I'd like to ask a question real quick. I want to know if uh, someone can ground properties in a shared property. Um, if that can, if that would suffice for some sort of realist view. What, what makes sorry. it the case, though? <laughs> What's, what would make it the case that the, uh, the properties have a shared property? No, what makes it the case that the shared property is the, is the essential property rather than non-essential? Well, uh, is, this, is that an argument against realism or nihilism? It's an argument That's against neither, realism. I mean, okay, yeah. It doesn't necessarily entail nihilism, it's just... Uh... If it doesn't entail nihilism, then there has to be a fact of the matter, which makes it the case yeah. that the properties are bundled together with respect to that singular object. Object, yeah. Right? Sure, they're bundled together by a shared property. Well, but what is the shared property? Uh, well, property that they all share. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I think uh, Jack was just explaining why that uh, it doesn't work. Yeah, because the issue is what makes it the case that the shared property is what's essential? Right, well, so why, so why are we appealing to the, the shared property just because of, in virtue of the fact that they share it? Because that's, if that's an arbitrary yeah. presentation, then you're just being arbitrary, uh, which is the same, which is the same, you know, token is saying that, like, whatever. So that's just an argument from ignorance. You're saying that, why is it the case that that property is the shared property. It's not an argument form. from ignorance. You're appealing to a dormative virtue to justify why you appeal to that property. <clears throat> why would I have to appeal? I mean... Okay. Uh, can you explain how it's a dormative principle? Because he's just saying, I appeal to it in virtue of its being the shared property. That doesn't answer the question. Uh, it's just a basic belief. <laughs> it's not a question of basic beliefs or not. Why not? Right? What? I'm asking you what, what makes it the case yeah. right, that that is the property um, that binds them together rather than it's merely your belief. instrumental attribute. What, what does that even mean? I'm not asking. What? what? Uh, I'm not asking you. Why don't you ask I'm not Jack, asking you claim that babies having no intentions is a basic belief. It's a... No, I'm sorry, did you, did you have an argument that I was mistaken about that? Well, do you have an argument that I'm mistaken it. about? I didn't, I didn't catch that, right? Would you like to go over that again? Because you seem to think that by ridiculing me, you actually uh, have, an, have a superior position that I do, so you should be able to provide an objection that I can't answer. Right now, I asked you what that objection was, and you weren't able to produce it. So, if you'd like to go over that again now, I'm happy to do that. Right? So, do you have an objection to show that I'm mistaken about my claim that the attribution of intentionality to babies can't be justified by anything other than an appeal to a mere basic belief? Because I didn't well, get the yeah. argument last time. Do you have, you have that an argument? Objection. You have an objection against the idea that shared properties... Uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I'm asking you a different question now. You said, ask Jack. He thinks that basic beliefs... He thinks that the attribution of intentionality to babies is a mere basic belief. So I take it that the implication there is that I'm mistaken about that and that that's a ridiculous view. So presumably, you have an argument to show that my view is mistaken. What's the argument? We could ask you the same, the very same question. What is the argument to see that? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. He's just asking. If you, have, so, if, if, you have, if you have an argument, render the argument. If you don't have an argument, just say no. And then we'll, then we'll move on. I think it would be 
best to just say no so that we can move on to ask that question, that you don't have an argument against that position. And I think we went over it for a long time, man. So I, I don't think it's really, I don't think it's really going to help what you said. You didn't even want to talk about it anymore. But yes, I did have an argument, and I mentioned it was special pleading, but... And how did you respond? How did you respond to my objection that in fact it's not special pleading for the reason you never even addressed my point? You didn't address my point. My God. Oh my God. Um. Wow. Behoove you in order to move on to just say no. That like that 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 that. I will conditionally say no just for the sake of argument. So in fact, you don't actually have any basis by which to ridicule my position. I would just conditionally say no just for the sake of argument. Well, see, the thing is, Jack, Jack, the thing is, he's going to, like, when this thing ends, he's going to, like, come up with something, some, like, half-assed argument, and they say, oh, now I have the objection. I'm but that familiar with his motive, Saparanda. I have seen him in action. I mean, it's... He likes to make... He might still like little barbs, but when he gets challenged, he runs away. And that's what he did today. And that's what he did just now, right? When he tried to ridicule my position yeah. by saying, as Jack, he believes that the attribution of intentionality to babies is just a basic belief. But when challenged, he couldn't actually produce the objection. Uh, okay, Jack, so we you know that's it, very we dishonest. And I, you know that I did produce an objection. Well, let's go over the objection then. Uh, right? You said that there's some kind of inductive argument, right, that can be made given the assumption that central nervous systems are the basis for intentionality. Now, if somebody share, doesn't share that assumption, what argument could you make that they ought to have that assumption? Okay, so that wasn't actually my argument. My argument oh, I'm was sorry. that... Please state your argument. It's special pleading to say that X and Y are members of the same set, but X has intentionality and Y doesn't. So X would be human what? adults and Y would be fetuses. Wait. Uh, what if somebody says? What if somebody says that they don't belong to the same set? What on what them wrong? Do they not belong to the same set? Well, it depends on what set you're talking about. Like babies. They don't, they don't possess intent. One possesses intentionality, and the other doesn't. By virtue of what? By virtue of the fact that one doesn't have language and one does. Well, that's a different objection oh, okay. than the one that I'm making. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you want, if I want to say that rocks have intentionality and human beings have intentionality, right? How is it that I'm engaging in special pleading? If if I'm not already assuming, right, that the basis for intentionality is central nervous systems, right? If somebody doesn't share that assumption, right, and wants to attribute intentionality to rocks, right? How, without already assuming and begging the question against the view that it's central nervous systems which are uh, a necessary condition for intentionality. But How Jack, is it that you your example is this analogous? Are. Because in your example, you're attributing, you are providing a difference between X and Y. You're saying consciousness or intentionality is due to central nervous system. So you're saying that X and Y are not members of the same set by virtue of having a central nervous system. But that's my question. I'm asking by virtue of what? X and Y do not belong to the same set. Uh, Jackie, uh, I might be able to try to. Can I try to take this? All right. Okay. So um, I thought he tried to explain that when he said it's about the prior probability. When you're saying, um, and we're saying that it's a necessary condition uh, by certain people's probability that um, someone has a central nervous system. But that doesn't mean that it's a sufficient condition, right? You, you agree to that? And just because something is a necessary condition, it doesn't uh, it doesn't follow that it's in fact a sufficient condition, right? Um. Yes, I agree that necessary doesn't entail sufficient. Okay. Or sorry. Yeah. Just because, so just because uh, Jack shares in the in the assumption that a central nervous system is required for intentionality, it doesn't follow from that being a necessary condition for intentionality that it is, in fact, a sufficient condition for intentionality, right? Uh, yes. How is that relevant to what I just said? Um, well, you said it was special pleading. 
you said it was special pleading to attribute intentionality to human beings and not to babies, even though they belong to the same set, which is the set of beings that have central nervous systems. But if you don't think central nervous systems are sufficient, condition for having intentionality how is that special pleading um okay so you're saying under the assumption that central nervous systems are not sufficient for intentionality i'd have to think about that for a second you know keep thinking well i, I would say that babies don't have a developed nervous system to allow them to have intentionality and that would be the argument and I'd be done with it. I don't know what other argument. I mean, this should be like, I mean, I'm surprised because you should know this already. I mean, everyone, I mean, babies, infants don't have intentionality. It's something that has to develop. The, the, I think, uh, yeah, but I think you'd have, I, I think you, uh, that, would, that would be counterproductive to the argument, uh, but not simply because uh, what Derez is, is trying to forward is he trying to um, some physical facts um, uh, can can don't necessarily under determine uh, intentionality, but the idea is that intentionality is, is something logical. So it's not as if you can just appeal to physical facts. Oh uh, well, okay. In that case, I'm in. A, I'm not a real. I have to. I have to. Uh, we're not. We're not starting this from this. We're from a common assumption. Okay. Um, because you're, you're you're like you're part of the camp that thinks that qualitative states are not necessarily private or they're knowable from third party perspective. Like that. So can so, I ask a question to Jack? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, so, I guess. So basically the argument that Jack uh, just raised is that he's saying that X and Y do not belong to the same set because the central nervous system underdetermines intentionality. So uh, that really doesn't explain why X and Y do not belong to the same set. That just means X and Y do not necessarily belong to the same set. You still have to give a reason why X and Y are members of a different set. Why would I have to give a reason? reason? Why would I have to give a reason? Because otherwise you're special pleading. You're special pleading, right? You're saying X and Y, you're saying that because X and Y both have central nervous systems, that's a sufficient reason to assume that they both have intentionality. How is that special pleading? That's not well, even... If I ask you, irrelevant to special if I ask you, why is it the case that you think a central nervous system is sufficient for you to draw the conclusion that they both have intentionality, what are you going to appeal to? I, I'm not saying, I, I wasn't even saying that. I was saying that if X and Y are members of the same set, then there's no reason to say that X has properties, Y doesn't. The same so, set, the same set there is going to mean um, beings that both uh, have the sufficient conditions for intentionality, right? But I can say, well, they're part of the same set as both having the necessary conditions for intentionality, but not having the same sufficient conditions, not not both having the sufficient conditions for intentionality. So what okay, makes so you what right are the sufficient and conditions me wrong? Which, what are the sufficient conditions which adult humans have, which uh, babies lack? Oh, I'm sorry. Well, um, <clears throat> I don't have to provide uh, an explanation for that because there's no reason to assume that we can know what all the necessary conditions are, given that, um, I'm sorry, what all the, what the sufficient conditions are, given the fact that we're committed to the view that the physical facts underdetermine the intentional facts. Oh, my. Okay. Oh, I did it wrong. I did it wrong there. Yeah, I'm sorry. So you don't have to give a reason why X and Y belong to different sets? Um, yeah, you don't I justify any of the statements I've been making in this whole discussion. When it comes to basic beliefs, what? Again? When it comes to basic beliefs, why would I have to give a reason. Isn't that what basic beliefs are? Things that are not actually justified? Things which do not actually, which things we, which you can't justify, but things which are also necessary for epistemology. I thought those were basic beliefs. I don't know what 
Um, can I just can I just hold on to it and figure out what it is, and I'll come back. Re can you cancel the transaction, and I'll. I gotta look up the the, the password. I'm sorry. What was the what? What did you say, Darius? I asked you, I, I said that if it's a basic belief, I said if it's a basic belief, I got to figure out what the password is. Can you just hold that for a minute? Yeah, I'm saying basic beliefs are not just beliefs which are unjustified or beliefs which are unfalsifiable. I'm, I'm saying basic beliefs are those beliefs which are unjustified but which are necessary for epistemology. Why, why, why would we... Give me one, just one minute and I'll, I'll be back. Um, uh, what I understand a basic belief to be is just a belief that is not justified by any further justifiers. But I don't see why it has to be necessary. Why should it have to be necessary? Uh, we have all kinds of... Then I can hold any basic belief that I want. I, I can hold the basic belief that uh, just any unfalsifiable un un belief could be a basic belief. Well, I mean... There's nothing wrong with having uh, basic beliefs, and it doesn't matter what the content of the basic beliefs is, right? When, when you're assenting to a belief being basic, all that means is that you can't justify it. So, yeah, I mean, it's trivially true that you can have any basic belief you want, but that's not going to be convincing if you're trying, if you're going, trying to make arguments for the position that you're trying to hold. So, so, so are you trying to make arguments for a position you're trying to hold? Well, there's a, there's a, there's the idea here. I'm trying to explain that the, uh, the idea of intentionality is going to be a basic belief, right? We're making arguments to that effect. Okay, so are you, are you arguing for the position that babies lack intentionality or are you not arguing for that position? I'm saying that there's no argument that can be given to show that that position is wrong. Right? You can't make some kind of inductive argument to show that it's wrong without actually begging the question against the view. That's what we're saying. But I don't get Are you actually saying that it's true that babies lack intentionality? Are you I'm saying, saying that's the I'm way saying, the universe is? I'm saying that that's my belief, right? But if you ask me to prove it, I'm not able to prove it. I'm, I'm not asking if that's your belief. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking... Do you think, are you saying that's the way the world is? That's what I believe the way the world is. He's saying, he's saying he can't justifiably assert that, right? I can't assert it. Are you saying I should believe? Are no, you saying, saying I should I'm believe that? I'm not saying that you way? should believe it. Okay, so what are you saying? You're saying I shouldn't believe that, that babies lack intentionality? Then, like, what's the point of this whole discussion? You were saying that if somebody believes that they, they that human beings possess intentionality and that babies do not possess intentionality, that they're engaged in special pleading. That doesn't follow. So you're not saying I should believe that. I haven't given you reasons to believe it, so why should you believe it? So you're saying I, sh I shouldn't, I, I should not believe that? I I'm saying that that's what I believe, right? And I don't have any justifiers to offer you, if you're a skeptic, why you should believe that rather than not. Right, so you're saying you believe that, but you're not trying to convince me. That's right. Okay. I said that like a long time ago, man. So now where are we with this whole thing? Well, uh, your res wanted to, to attempt to say that it was just a basic belief that properties are bundled together. Um, that properties are bundled together uh, ontologically. So I think that's what kind of got us off track. Yeah, 
Yeah, I can tell. Um, so, Derez will probably think about that and then come up with something. Um, so, um, I guess it's my turn. Uh, uh, I gotta go anyway because it seems like Andrew Smith is drilling, so uh, <laughs> I think I'm gonna go. Uh, I have to sleep anyway. Uh, see you guys. Uh, Alright, bye, man. Okay. Bye. So. Damn. I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. I, I mean, he, this is nothing new. I mean, this guy is... It was hard to tell. But what I'm saying is, like, when I asked what it is, it, I'm saying it was hard to tell where he was, um... It was hard to tell where he was misunderstanding. Yeah. And where he, where he where was just being, like, um, refusing to, you know, um accept the arguments or something, you know what I mean? Like, it was, it's hard to tell where he was failing to understand because it seemed like there were some places where he just didn't understand what Jack was saying, right? Well, I mean, the thing is, it, it's it's a sort of... I think he did understand what Jack was saying. He just wasn't... Because he, was, he, he wasn't making any claims. He was just saying, oh, well, I'm just gonna, for the sake of argument, I'm going to say no. Well, what do you mean for the sake of argument? You're trying to argue a position... And you're just going to put up a wall. Well, I told him, you know, I was the one who was telling him not to. I was just like, because we went through that before you got in here, man. Okay. We went through that for a long time before you got in here. Oh. And uh, it was it was really in that, and he wanted to move on. And so <laughs> the fact that he wanted to move on, I was trying to move the conversation back to back to myriological nihilism because that was the third point that he wanted to address in his conversation with me. Andrew thinks I made a bad move by inviting Jack. We could talk about that. Well, I mean, I mean, I like Jack's analysis and I mean, he's smart, but I mean, he, d -Rez did the whole runaway tactic, which is not surprising. Um, I was, but I was impressed with how long he stayed though. Oh, yeah, I mean, th there was a couple hours from when you posted it. I mean, I'm surprised it got that far. Um, so were you guys just going in circles the whole time, or what? Well, it was really... It was really difficult for a while there, because... It, I mean, it's almost as if he, if he understood the argument, then he wouldn't have then he wouldn't have continued. So that's why it was like hard to tell whether he was just trying to uh, trying to refuse the argument on principle or if he just if he just legitimately just had no clue what the hell Jack was saying, you know. I mean that happens yeah. Yeah, I mean that happens all the time where I, I, I used to think that it was because he just doesn't know how to digest it, but then you know, he wants to make all, he wants to like put up a fight and then, you know, when backed into a corner, he just starts rolling around in the mud. Oh, I love that this is recorded. It is? I'm so happy to have this to listen to. Wait, this is recorded? Yeah. Yeah, I'm recording it too, actually, from when I got in. Um. Were you, what were you saying, Philip? Oh, this is, uh, you're asking if you guys could hear me. Yeah. yeah I, I, oh, okay. Well, I, uh, the question I was going to ask him, right, was um, if, uh, like, because he said his argument, like, for the special pleading thing, right, was that Jack is, you and Jack were, like, arbitrarily, like, <laughs> they're, like, uh, both human, like, the, a baby and an adult are human, right? So you're arbitrarily kind of like uh, giving intentionality to an adult uh, when you went into a baby, right? Uh-huh. Right, and so I was going to ask him, like, well, he believes that uh, when humans are asleep, they don't have intentional states. So why does he think that? I mean, they're both humans. Well, he said that he, said that he was appealing to behavior. Um, I don't see it. But Jack was explaining why behavior wasn't was insufficient. 
to account for intentionality because behavior is consistent, uh, because all behaviors are consistent with all the physical facts, right? Right. So, so what Derez was doing, he was trying to say, well, a person is sleeping, they don't have intentionality because they're sleeping, saying, well, they did, uh, you know, that's consistent with them having intentionality. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying, like, why couldn't I just say then, like, you know, when the baby, when babies do things that, you know, behaviorally we don't think they have intentional states, why can't I just say they don't have intentional states? Yeah. Um, I, Hold on. Yeah. Animating Rebel says he can't join. I'm going to try to give him the direct link or something. Oh, oh, oh dude. Oh. Oh. Um, oh, he just... How do I find him on... Oh, God. I love the way Jack crushed d -Rez. That was just awesome. I, this is so fun. I don't have to talk now. Yeah, talk all you want, man. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't trolling him. I was just, I was showing a, a Chichun video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's trolly as fuck. Fuck off. <laughs> I told you not to do it. Wait, Animating Rebel is messaging me. In the folder in the in in the Dropbox. Did you think I did a good a good job, job? Uh, yeah, you did. You did better at explaining it than I did. I don't. I don't know. For some reason, it's a lot easier for you not to get led down rabbit trails than it is for me. Oh. I did a good job, Josh. Yeah, I was saying that you do exemplary and not getting let down rabbit trails that, that I always succumb to. Oh, okay, good. I'm telling you, Pal Talk, it really trains you. Yeah, I can see, you know, that. Like, I can see that because like I can't. Because, you, you know, you have to understand, when I first got on Pal Talk, it was before the Skype group, right? Yeah. I had had many de I had had many debates, you know, you know um, particularly like email type debates and stuff. But um, when you get on Pal Talk, you know, because of the two minute or three minute mic thing, you know, and you do it day after day. Because I didn't have the Skype group in those days, so I was on it all the time. You know? Oh fuck. Oh, but yeah, I think that actually does kind of help. Like, I, I even feel better. Like, only after a few days, like, I can kind of articulate my points better. Well, I mean, this is what I was trying to do with Derezd on the notion of qualia, and the guy was just flopping around like a rabbit, like a dead fish. I mean, hey, and is animating rebel your friend, Polymath? Yeah. Send him the direct link because he hasn't seen mine. Okay. And it, it teaches you sort of how to avoid what's relevant, you know, like how not to be, like, you know, like with the... You sent it in the, I thought, but you didn't send it through Facebook, though, did you? Oh, no. Are you his friends on Facebook? Yeah, well, no, but I can send it to him through it. Um, Annie was objecting that foundationalism is the... Uh, non-causal control and just meaningless terms yeah in there. I saw your video I saw your video on the whole square circle and then we asked him a series of questions uh, by intrinsic he means non-causal so there's no that's just redundant to put that in there I guess but um, we asked him a series of questions like what it means to control something and he said it means for the agent to make free choices. It's just that? Some, what? Sorry, like a way to control the outcome without causing the outcome to come about. But isn't control like a form of... How can, isn't that determinism then, if something's controlled? No, it's not causal control. <laughs> What he's saying is just a meaningless, it's just a contradiction. <laughs> what he's saying, it literally translates to non-causal causality. Yeah, this guy, I mean, why is he, why, why do they even try? This is like... You can't think of control apart 
for being causal. What what he wants to change he wants to change the definition of control to mean qualia for some reason. That's just really bizarre. Well, I mean, qual. I mean, does he hold that qualia has any causal powers? Because if he does, no, no, absolutely not. He he's, he literally states that you do one thing over another for no reason. Which is like, well, when you try to point out that you know they they just doing it randomly because that's what randomness is. He's like, no, it's not random because I said so. Yeah, this guy is a boo. Well, so his thing is right. But like, this is why Sam Butler's analogy was really good, right? Because he wants to say randomness is something that happens for no reason, right? And he knows randomness and um. Like you know, causing something. You guys are now. You guys are misrepresenting him. You, you actually are. He, really? He used to say randomness to something that happens for no reason, which, by the way, is the actual definition of randomness that everyone uses. Oh, I'm but sorry. He's, he's redefined it specifically for, to to save his position. He's built into the meaning of randomness that it doesn't something allow for control. Right? It doesn't allow. Well, specifically, it doesn't allow for the fake definition of control he made. So he's built that into the meaning of the word randomness, so he has a fake idea of control and a fake idea of randomness, and with those things together, he's, he saves his position, or at least he thinks he does. Well, what I was going to say, right, is he knows, like, causality and randomness are, like, contrary, right? Does he know that? Okay. I mean... I'm asking Andrew. Okay, yes, he, he does know that. Um, what he's talking about is, doesn't involve causality... Or there's there's it's random in the ordinary sense of randomness. He wants to just say, well, a square circle. You'll say that like a circle has zero corners, right? But he'll just say, well, no, you're begging the question because you're assuming a non, you're assuming a non, uh, you're assuming a zero uh, cornered circle, right? But he's assuming, or you're just assuming a, a zero that uh, his experience is consistent with it with him not having control there's no there's no reason why his experience would be different yeah it's like saying i have a subjective experience of a 19-sided triangle that eats fries it's a nonsense term <laughs> yeah he's, he's saying because he's gonna say that there's, there's philosophers uh I, I there's one there's, to be clear there's one he's a nobody um, and the person who disagreed with him, the one guy who thought, I'm going to respond to this jackass, if you notice his response, he was just baffled that the guy even said that. He was like, what do you mean non-causal control? And he just thought of like an example, like, if, how would I have that? Like, he, 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 he made one example, like, do I have control in this circumstance? Uh, well, in order to have control, to say I have control, it have to be causal. And Adam Rebel says... Well, that's just one circumstance. But the point is, though, anything you conceive of where you'd say you have control, it would be causal. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what control means without causality. I You're think... just begging the question. Yeah, if you, if you say you don't know what it means, well, that's <laughs> your problem. <man. laughs> Somehow that's a defensive institution. <laughs> You're just, you're just assuming a zero-cornered uh, circle so when, when you can all assume a non-zero-cornered circle. When all this fails, when he hasn't explained anything, and when you've actually shown that the reason why he can't is because we know he's headed towards gibberish. He's headed down a path towards gibberish. That's why he hasn't gotten anywhere. He, his last resort is to say, well, I think I've experienced it, and based on my own experience, you were compelled to believe it. That my experience is evidence that it should convince you. He said that to me. Yeah. Like Chichoni. <laughs> it's well, not only that. Even if it's like, we, we is all this still being recorded because I want this part. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm recording this. Even if we, uh, even if we granted all his nonsense, right? Like I could still shove him into the same position because I can just ask him, well, why did the agent non-causally control one thing over the other? What could he say to that? If he gives a reason, then it's just causing him. If he can't give one, then it's random. And if he says, well, it's non-causal control, well, then you just add an infinite regress. Yeah. Um. It's it's just nonsense. I pe. <laughs> even if we granted his, even if his gibberish can't get around this. Yeah. 
actually think that's a good point, Philip. I, I, I don't understand why he doesn't have to, thank you though. I don't understand why he doesn't get this. Can he, Polly, did you give him the link? Yeah, I gave it to him through Facebook and through Google. Um, oh my god, I want him to come in here so we can kill him. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. They're the minority by far. Because <laughs> there may be other gaggle idiots, right? The position itself, you know, libertarian free will, the whole position itself is, is a minority. The, yeah. The, the people who defended his way is an extreme minority. How do they defend it, though? I mean, do they... Because then, when you're trying to prove this sort of contradictory nonsense, you get into all this obscure verbiage of, you know... Hey, what, do you, what are you saying? You said that you had a, a, a reference to the guy that he cited that he was in a debate with someone? I want to see that. What, what, who are you talking to? Ander. No, no, that's not... That's, I, I may I may not have been clear. I, okay, he he cited someone who, who came up with this non-causal uh, control bullshit, and then uh, after he cited that guy, he he also cited an objection from a different philosopher. And if you see the objection, it's kind of just like mine. Um, he's just baffled at the idea that you could say that, and he's. He thinks of an example of him having control, and he's like, if it, if it wasn't causal, would you say I have control here? And of course, no. And not only is it with that example, but any example you can think of, you would be like, no, you don't have control unless it's causal. And the, of course, the reason why is because there's no meaning behind non-causal control. No one can even uh, – under. that's just an unintelligible thing. Yeah. Uh, well, it's funny because he tried to say – well, he tried to give a definition, right? He tried to say, well, it's when a, the agent makes things happen. But yeah, what but does he mean to make things happen? He won't, even let me, he, he won't even let me quote him on that anymore. He's backtracked from that. So he – and the reason why he did that was because I was like, look, if you're using the word control, you have to be using some definition of it that already exists, right? Why would you be using the word control if you – with your own new definition, you could call it anything you want at that point. There's no reason to even call it control. Yeah. So, and like dig up, dig up a dictionary definition somewhere that doesn't require causality. And he went with make things happen, which of course makes no sense without causality. But does he so, still use his chart? Does he still use that chart? No, no, he no, you? no. But let me continue anyway. Okay. So, so he went with that one, which which was again unintelligible unless we consider it being causal and he got rid of it so with without that he's left with nothing i'm still waiting for a definition of control a real definition that already exists that he didn't make up i'm still waiting on that and that's when he complained like you're not giving me a lot of options here what options what do you mean i you haven't explained what you're talking about you won't give me a definition that's that's all the options you're supposed to get <laughs> what he thinks is though he's supposed to be allowed to say I felt it, therefore you have to believe it. Like without, without it being coherent, and, and and not even considering the fact that I don't have to trust his experiences. His experiences are evidence for himself, not for me. Yeah, I mean, ah. once he's gotten down to experience, he's just done. Um, he's just. Uh, uh, did you use Sam Butler's objection, by the way, in your video? Because I know he wrote this really good objection. Um, let me think. Not, no, not that I know of. I didn't use. I haven't used anything Sam said in any of my videos. Okay. Because I know he had this really good objection. I don't. I don't. I don't think it matters though, because he's just grasping at straws at this point. Same thing with Derez. I mean, I'm getting tired of that whole tactic he does, where he just tries to jab at you and then he leaves the hangout like a like a wounded gazelle and then you know he he says oh wait i have a solution to your argument and then he doesn't i think he's legitimately getting distressed to the point where he's he's not contacting me anymore because he used to like it wouldn't be five minutes you know that the hangout passed that he would be in the in the chat just talking shit right um does he been, and like it's been decreasing and decreasing it might have something to do with his uh his personal obligations but 
but um, I think it might also have to do with the fact that that it's just wearing on him. You know, like I, if he doesn't enter a hangout, I just call him a coward, right? I don't even, I don't even focus on his arguments because I've explained why it's not productive to write fucking books, right? And I told him that too. I was like, I'm not going to write an infinite number of books for you to try to understand the goddamn point, right? You can get at it, you can get in a hangout and we can address the absurdities as they come one by one, right? And and I told him, I was like, read what Randion wrote to you under uh, under Manwookie's video. And I said, reread it and reread it again until you understand why you're wrong and then do that to every comment I ever wrote you. <laughs> Right, uh, and then after that, after you've concluded that you're wrong, then we can get into a fucking hangout and discuss it. But I'm not going to keep running the same points for him to misunderstand over and over again. You know? Yeah, it's it's just so tiring, it's, especially when you know he demands that you know people give him the time of day, and um, you know, only to you know realize this guy doesn't understand what the hell you're saying, which is why. You know, I got into him, got into the conversation about qualia with him, and about how qualia doesn't exist in a vacuum. And then the guy was just spinning in circles. He he was just uh, spiraling out of control, and he he ended it by saying, "Well, I don't think you're understanding what I'm saying," which is really convenient if you're not saying anything productive. You can just say, "Well, you just don't get it," and you know that's your fault. Yeah, that sounds familiar. It's it's just a lazy way of thinking. I mean, if you don't, I, I try to make it as clear as possible. If you, if you don't understand, I, I was under the impression that animating retard was on his way. Uh, he said in the chat that um, it's not that I don't have the link. My device doesn't have enough juice. What? But why the fuck? You know. The reason he said it is he said, I can't join the Hangout, uh, but in case someone men hasn't mentioned it, foundationalism holds that all beliefs are justified, blah, 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 but when you say you can't join the Hangout, that means like, you know, you, you have the intention to, he just fucking used words in a really stupid way. He's <laughs> a <laughs> hand-waving word fucker. Yeah. Yeah, that was so funny. Join. Let's try to let's try to get him in the call, right? Let's try various methods. And then he's like, "Oh, it's not that I don't have the link. My device doesn't have the battery power. Fucking idiot, right? Why didn't he just say I'm leaving because my device doesn't have the battery? But here's a comment I wanted to say. What? If, why didn't he just say that? Yeah, I mean, this guy's a douche. Uh... Fun fact, by the way, I I'm drunk right now. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know. I just got back to school and I was just like, yeah. I just went and bought alcohol. <laughs> Are you drinking by yourself? Yeah, I'm gonna go out soon. Um, to because it's like a week and all the freshmen are like really horny. That's so depressing. <laughs> drinking by yourself. You shouldn't drink by yourself. That's really depressing. Yeah, like in like t 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes. Oh, uh, uh, you mean you're going to hang out with Animating Rebel, Ander? Yeah, these these things you set up, like, uh, you know, the corner, these to, to just trap these people. Uh, you do this to Derez, which is kind of fun, but it would, would be so much more fun with Animating Rebel. Well, well, this part I'm not going to publish on YouTube or anything because I don't want to know that <laughs> I don't want him to ever know that this is being planned. Um, <laughs> but I mean, if you want to set up, I know I can set it up because he, uh, I can't really uh, reach him, and uh, he would reject any offer from me. Um, but I'd like to have animating retard in a hangout with uh, like you. <laughs> Randy on Jack, some some combination of that, and just let him fucking dig his own grave. <laughs> yeah, I don't even 
don't even think I don't even think you'd be up to that, Jack. Would you be up to that? He's a little too retarded for Jack to to talk to, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I need to see that. Oh my god! He's um, so laughably dumb. He just doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. I I think he. I don't even know why I'm giving him my time. Um, if you want, if you want, rain down. Well, rain down is captured by ISIS right now. Oh, oh yeah. Shit, really? Yeah, but. But when, uh, but when he returns, he would be the... Returns? He's not coming back. <laughs> no, but I think I have confidence that Rainion, uh will either be ransomed or has the, the smarts to escape. Uh, anyway. Is um, he really if, being captured if, by the, Maja fact, the Mujahidun? If in fact, uh, if in fact he does um, resurface... All you're going to accomplish by getting him into a hangout with animating rebel is just really, really, really depressing Randion. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it would be bad for Randion yeah. because he's too animating rebel is too stupid for. Oh, but, oh, but it would I, it would be so much fun. I don't think I don't think Randion would object to it. But I'm just saying that that's what's going to happen. You're going to be like, you, you're going to see. <laughs> It's so funny. I'm gonna be so disappointed because he doesn't get mad when people don't understand things or people are lying or something. I don't know. I right? think I think uh, it, it'll be uh, it'll it'll be a little bit more uh, fair, a little bit more even than you're you're thinking because uh, when when he gets hit with that word salad from Animated Rebel, <laughs> like he's not prepared for that. Yeah, he'll probably short circuit. <laughs> it's gonna take him a moment to recover. <laughs> he'll short circuit and like explode, and then be like, "What the fuck did I just hear?" <laughs> oh man, I need to get inspiring philosophy in here because he's Dude, he is the worst, man. I hate that guy. I, I mean, I would probably be laughing too much at his voice cracking. Honestly, like it's just impossible to listen to him. Yeah, he's annoying as fuck. Uh, especially in, in, I must, I imagine it takes him like a decade to film a fucking video, dude. <laughs> oh yeah, oh definitely. Oh my god, I, I just, I just want to kill him on he, the problem of evil because I don't know why he just can't understand. He this. cannot type, dude. He cannot type for shit. What is? I was explaining to him. I was explaining to him at length why. The ontological argument using his criteria. I was using his criteria to explain why the ontological argument begs the fucking question. And he was just like, no, it's just circular reasoning, and it's okay. It's not just informing people. And I was like, but it's not. The link that you gave, and he gave me a link, and he was like, he was like, B knows the context, yet disputes it anyway. And I said, that's, you're begging the question under your criteria. He was like, no, I'm not. I hate that guy. <laughs> I just like it's so funny too because Plantinga knows this. He admits. I, I I gave a video to Ander where he even says, you know, I collide. Like it doesn't really work. Oh, damn it, he left. Ander's gone for good now. Oh really? Why? Because that's that's. I just have that opinion. I call it the ontological. Uh, the, if you want to call the ontological argument an argument. Uh, that doesn't change the, the intent or its overall goal. As I said in my series, the ontological argument is meant to be the cap of natural the theology uh, and bring the other arguments together as the final thrust. All right, guys, I'm going to head out now. Uh, nice talking to you.